This video will be about the Pondicona dog. It's also called the Indian uh, Doberman. And it's a breed of the Kurnu region in India. And it's about to go extinct. And the reason why it's about to go extinct is that it is a natural dog that is yeah, just dwelling around cities. And on the other hand, it's very local. So the Pondicona region is where it originated and yeah, this local variety has been kept but not so much as a pet but more as a dog around the dwellings so it's a primitive type of dog which means that uh, yeah, the development is more of a natural uh, phenomenon so this dog has little exaggerations and is very capable of uh, fending for itself. It is a combination of a dog that is uh, very good at hunting, it's more of a side hound, and also a dog that's uh, good at protecting, otherwise they would not be tolerated around the villages. So you get a dog which has uh, next to its build also other similarities with the Doberman. And why is this? <coughs> So when the British came to India and they saw this dog, they called it the Indian Doberman. And why? Because the looks were quite similar to that of the European Doberman that they knew. And the thing is, if you go back to the evolution of the Doberman, there's German Shepherd type in there, which is quite a natural type of dog. Not so far off of the wolf at that time. And also there is Rottweiler, uh, more of a massive type of dog in there. There's Pinscher blood in there. But also Greyhound, which is a, a hunting sighthound again. Like this Indian variety of the Indian Doberman, so to say. These types of dogs uh, are also yeah, left so much to interact with the genetic uh, gene pool that is present that you also see some of these dogs that are not that black some are even white whitish some have the hounds uh, so more of this the smelling hounds type of uh, colorations oftentimes they also have scratches on their body and you might uh, ask why i think it could be twofold one to show that these dogs are from the village and the, and the villagers will tell you when you say it's cruel it also helps with their uh, immunity so it could be both another thing is that um, these type of dogs because they are left to interact and can vary quite a bit depending on the genetic lineage that they have uh, and the gene pool is extremely wide which gives them uh, even though they are quite a rare breed a very good genetic gene pool so a lot of a lot less illnesses and other problems with which come with bigger dogs like for example the european doberman are almost not or not found in this breed so it also gives you some background that even if you have a little bit of these type of dogs if you are bred right then you have a big chance of um, getting good dogs and the other thing is that uh, because of the genetic diversity, it's very hard to pin a certain size or especially weight on these type of dogs because a dog that has a little bit more molosser blood in there. And I think that the reason why these type of sighthounds are so much stronger than the other sighthounds or running, uh, running dogs is that there is uh, blood of the gold there which is a local type of uh, yeah, bull terrier, so to say. And also uh, the Bullicuta, which can be described as a local type of uh, Great Dane, that's also present there, can also be interacted. And then you're gonna have a lot heavier dog. So in general, they are a little bit smaller than a European uh, Doberman. So, the least 
uh, heights that they can have at the width is normally 48 centimeters, which is, which is uh, approximately the size of an American Staffordshire Terrier, a big one. And the maximum size is often described as 66 centimeters. It is about the size of a smaller Doberman male or more the size of a German Shepherd dog. So it gives you a little bit of scope of the size these type of dogs are uh, known to have. This uh, female also has a little bit of the pincher type of uh, head, which you can imagine that these type of dogs uh, have. Because they have uh, yeah, this semi-wild primitive nature, these dogs are hard to keep as pets. But they can also be very easy to be kept as pets if you are allowed to have your dog roaming around and they stay around the village and then they take care of vermin yeah, for example rats, rodents and also uh, because they are quite natural type of dogs they can even take care of bigs, big uh, game like boars so they hunt in packs then and they also are a lot stronger than your average uh, uh, running dog, side hounds, so you could compare them with, for example, greyhounds with a little bit of uh, American Pitbull Terrier bred into it. So, for example, a quarter. I think that's about the strength that these type of dogs uh, could muster. But also, they're quite capable of uh, keeping your vicinity very uh, safe because they also guard it. So, that's this type of dog in a nutshell. Have a great day. This morning we will discuss another Indian breed, the Mutho Hound, which is also known as the Caravan Hound. It's an Indian dog breed from the Karnataka region at the town of Mutho. So Mutho, without the ending on the E, on the e so not a hole, but M-U-D-H-O-L. And this dog is also known as the Caravan Dog because uh, very often the people that kept them also traveled quite a lot and uh, as you see now sometimes with the gypsies they also have their own hunting dogs especially lurchers and this could be uh, considered the same although it looks a lot more like a sighthound, a running dog like for example a greyhound or a saluki which also were in the beginning, hunting dogs, of course, the running dogs, so to say. But in later incarnations, they have developed into a show breed or a, a championship running dog. So, a dog that uh, gets the highest speeds. But uh, hunting progress is uh, sacrificed in that way. So, if you want a similar breed, then, for example, uh, a greyhound. But a little bit different and a little bit more directed at hunting. This could be a good breed. Another benefit of the Mutthole Hound is that it is a breed that uh, next to hunting abilities also is very protective for a side hound. So it will also try to protect its, uh, yeah, how do you say this, uh, its terrain against. Uh, those it considers to have ill intent. It is friendly with other dogs in general, so you could keep them in packs and also they hunt quite well in packs. And another benefit is that these dogs are bred and developed in India, which oftentimes puts a lot of stress on a dog breed because of the heat, but also the food quality, water uh, absence and the likes, which uh, these dog breeds are quite capable of handling. Another benefit is that these dogs uh, are uh, yeah, quite sturdy because they are still the performance bred. And that does not uh, uh, take away that you still should still consider, but also in the past 
you should uh, still consider health of course but as in the past greyhounds for example had very little trouble with uh, hip dysplasia or heart problems or the likes so running dogs in general for the size of dog are very healthy so that could also give you some insight of uh, the muttle hound it's also known by many other names which I put, will put in the title of this video to help you hope you liked it it's quite a rare breed and have a great day the dogs here on the leash are dogs that are actually <laughs> more intended for mud hole so to work on the ground and these are terriers petrol terriers left the female the right the male have a great day On this beautiful morning, we will discuss the Indian Paria dog, also known as the In dog or Indian Pai dog. And Pai comes from the Hindi Pai, and that means outsider. So that's what this type of dogs are. Paria dogs are the same. So a dog that's close to a human settlement, but not in it, as part of a member of it. So it's a natural type of dog. It also in my opinion, it looks a lot like uh, the Indian doll or the, the dingo if you like. It has a, a little curve at the end of the tail, but the tail is normally uh, worn uh, yeah, to the bottom like a wool or a dingo does, but not curled over the back. <coughs> this type of dog is very healthy because the white gene pool and the hard selection of course, only the strongest will survive. Such a lifestyle is also well adapted to uh, weather and harsh conditions. And uh, you have a dog that is in general quite happy among uh, humans. So that can be a big benefit. And because of its natural senses and also uh, increased smell and vigilance, they are also sometimes used by police forces next to a guard dog because they're happy with their own people but as a pariah dog of course to be um, yeah to be uh, accepted they also should provide benefits such as guarding abilities the average weight of the indian pariah dog is between 20 and 30 kilograms so this you this weight you see oftentimes in natural type of breeds that also uh, need to fend for themselves and also catch larger prey if needed. So this is a good medium sized dog that can do it all. This type of dog is uh, mentioned as one of the most healthy Indian dog breeds. This must be done by this natural selection and that they all have to fend for themselves so much. They are not a sighthound, they are much heavier built, as I mentioned, close to that of a dingo or a doll type of dog. <coughs> so a lot stronger, a little less fast, but a good uh, all-rounder. Also a wolf is not as fast as a sighthound, which is a running dog, eh? like a greyhound. But it is a heck of a lot stronger. And these uh, Indian Paria dogs, of course a lot smaller than the, your average uh, European wolf but they have a similar build they have a very nice compromise between um, speed but also power and I also am uh, intrigued by breeds that are able to fend up for themselves and still able to also to develop themselves in a natural type of dog is it because they are uh, started out with for example Indian doll blood in the bloodline or is it that the natural selection just favors a type of dog because if you have your average uh, type of household dogs and you will let them roam free and interbreed with all these different breeds Oftentimes, a specific subset of dog will occur. It's the same with the dingo. It was once 
a dog uh, from settlers and then you also got accused with some wild dogs I'm pretty sure of it but they have this similar build all of, all of them have that also erect ears that they can hear very nice it's a, it's a very fascinating story that also that man that uses uh, wolves to create dog breeds also the other way around dog breeds can recreate themselves in a more natural state <laughs> and very often they don't get that wolf type of color eh? it's a funny thing but uh, very often it will yeah, amend to a more reddish type of color perhaps someone knows more about it I'm happy to hear from you the dogs here on the lease are petadil terriers bred to work underground work quarry especially predators such as foxes and badgers but sometimes also used above ground against raccoons or hawks even have a great day today we will discuss an indian dog breed known as the sipi pare and it comes in many different colors including uh, brown brindle but also the black and the black dogs are not only called sipi pare but are especially known under the name kani and kani comes from the word that's translated with pure so they liked the black ones a lot more than the other colored uh, ones of the dog breed they are comparable to a greyhound, so a sighthound, but very elegant, very fast. You can reach speeds up to 60 km an hour, which are, which are not only very fast, but also uh, fast enough for their purpose. Because they are hunting dogs, uh, specifically for the hunting of hares and rabbits. Which need a very fast, elegant and dog. So this cunny type of uh, dog is translated as being pure and many people will tell you because their character is that pure but in my opinion this is especially because they like that color instead of the other colored varieties but also because in India they have many a sighthound type of dog but this dogs for example the Kani and also the other colors they have uh, a lot less different um, breeds in them so they are pure greyhound type of dogs instead of many other sighthounds in India which also are more more to be considered a lurcher so cross for example with some terrier or bull blood in them which makes them a little less fast and with these black dogs I think it would be harder to cross in other breeds so they could make uh, make it more sure that these dogs are pure running dogs instead of lurches that's my consideration in this uh, uh, field these types of dogs are well suited for a hunter they have a lot more prey drive than a greyhound uh, has in, ge in general they are capable hunters, they will kill uh, rabbits but also hares and hares are very hard to kill because they are that extremely fast and also capable of turning on a dime still that being said the success rate of uh, luring a hare compared to a rabbit is uh, less than one tenth because hares are a lot faster than rabbits so I hope you like this uh, short video, it is a rare breed, it has stem or association and uh, is very well respected in that area, have a great day. The dogs from Alicia are also black but those are petadils, so hunting dogs underground. In this video we will, dis we will discuss the Raya Palayam dog also known as the Polygar Hound. This is a dog that's famous because of its association with royalty. 
in India. It has been developed as a boar hunting breed. It's a little bit uh, similar to the Dogo Argentino in Argentina, but also it looks it looks a little bit less uh, uh, bulky, more of a fast type of dog. Because also the hawks are often a little bit smaller in India. It has more the, the looks of a bull Arab you find in Australia. And boar Arabs are being uh, crossed between running dogs such as greyhounds and also uh, dogs that are a lot stronger like Great Danes or Mastiffs or Bull Terriers. So this uh, Polygar Hound is a dog that also can be used as a watchdog, a guarding dog. Oftentimes it has a very pink nose, broad uh, head. And the colors can range, but very often are more of a lightish uh, tint. This you see as well with the uh, uh, Boer Arab, but especially well with the Dogo Argentino. Because if you have a lighter dog, it's easy to discriminate between the dog and the boar. And also, the lighter coat will help. And when you have a bigger type of dog, also as the Polygar Hound is, to uh, get rid of the heat. That's also the reason why the Bulikuta, the biggest Indian breed, is also very often white. And I think also that they have involved these other big breeds to develop this uh, dog, or that they at least have shared ancestry. Also, there's the Bull Terrier, that's the, the walking Bull Terrier of India, that uh, in my opinion also had a role in the development. Or overlapping ancestry with the polygar hound. Very nice big dog, can range uh, between 35 to 40 is uh, 45 kilograms and that uh, has a lot of the premises that the current day working boa rap has and it's a little bit lighter in build than the Dogo Argentino, also in Argentina. Uh, crossing Dogo Argentinos with, for example, Greyhounds to get a lighter type of dog that still has holding capabilities but is a lot uh, faster on its feet. Hope you like this video. Also, the Polygar Hound is uh, quite rare these days, so it's nice that they uh, are still being uh, bred and being used, and not only by royalty, although they have been associated with royalty a lot. Hopefully, hopefully also the working class can experience this uh, very nice dog breed. The dogs I have here on the leash are Petodo Terriers, so not developed for boar hunting, sometimes used as a smaller type of catch dog, but specifically developed to hunt underground, especially on predators such as foxes and badgers. Have a great day. Today we will discuss uh, an Indian dog breed known as the Rampur Greyhound, also known as the North Indian Greyhound because the Rampur region is in North India. This is in its essence just a Greyhound, but then their own local variety and they will tell you that they have developed these dogs over 100 years ago. And of course they have their own version of the Greyhound and that dog is still much more used for hunting and also even killing. So, contrary to the most greyhounds that lack the strength, these greyhounds, as a pure form, are already able to kill the jackals. They are used for the hunt of jackals and even used for the hunt of boar. The latter is a little bit hard for me to understand. I can understand those, those uh, dogs who chase the boar. But to really engage with it, I think this is not uh, so much the case. I think that they might be used like Dogo Argentinos as a catch dog, and then they have some running dogs like the Rampur Greyhound running and also chasing that quarry with a superior speed. And then the big sluggish dogs come in, for example, Bulikuta or Gulter, more the battle bot, so to say. And they take care of business and hold the prey in its place and then it is either shot or speared or something else by humans. 
I think this might be the case. But a dog is able to chase and hold or even kill a jackal is quite a feat for a running type of dog. If you look in uh, other regions, they very often uh, add other blood to make them strong enough to deal with jackals, coyotes or their likes. And very often they use a little bit of blue blood. But if you look at this type of Indian, North Indian Greyhound, you don't see in the face or the build a really blue influence. So it's not so much a lurch, but a pure running dog like a Greyhound is. The colors can vary very widely, from black to white to uh, all types of colors and plates. So color variety is immense like with the Greyhound and I think that you see uh, even more dogs with for example predominantly white color because that helps with the heat and then some colored plates on top of that for example brown or red or black. Hope you like this video the dogs that you see here are Petodo Terriers so they are also hunting dogs but then for below ground these type of dogs are sometimes also like this North Indian greyhound used in boar uh, hunting, but then as a very small type of cat dog. But there are better breeds for that, with more paw length, more speed, and that's ability to go underground so that you don't lose the dogs when you're uh, doing a push hunt. But regardless, even though they are very small, sometimes the bigger ones, and this was a bigger line are used for uh, boar hunting or raccoon hunting. In some states in the USA they even use them to take care of uh, coyotes because they are because the size an excellent lure dog. But if you have like three or four of them they can uh, take down a coyote. But sometimes coyotes also uh, hunt in packs and they just lure the dog and then even a big dog like a Rottweiler can be uh, yeah. ambushed by all those coyotes and ripped to shreds. Have a great day, take care of your dogs and don't let them get into uh, harm's way if you can help it. Have a great day.